Hi, this is Michael Altos, and welcome back to Pharmacology for Anesthesiologist Assistants. This is the beginning of our second semester, and we're going to start with a discussion about cardiovascular system, specifically vasodilators and antihypertensives, and this is part one. Let's start by reviewing some of the substances that we discussed last semester. We started with a discussion of alpha antagonists, specifically phentolamine, phenoxybenzamine, and drugs like prazosin and doxazosin. These are all alpha blockers. They all bind to the alpha receptor. And the phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine are really used exclusively for management of pheochromocytoma. Although, as we discussed, it's really becoming a little bit less and less common for patients to be put onto these medications. We do still see many patients being treated with prazosin or doxazosin, terazosin, uh, for pretreatment of pheochromocytoma, and these drugs are also used in the treatment of uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy and other prostate conditions. All of these drugs have in common that they block the action of the catecholamines. The phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine are notable for their alpha-2 receptor blockade, which increases norepinephrine release and can lead to an increased heart rate. Side effects of these drugs include reflex tachycardia, orthostatic hypotension, and a variety of colonomimetic side effects like hyperperistalsis, abdominal pain, and diarrhea, which can even be treated with an anticholinergic drug like atropine or glycopyrrolate. Remember that patients who have a pheochromocytoma may be chronically volume depleted because of their vasoconstricted state, and that may explain why treatment with alpha antagonists leads to tachycardia and orthostatic hypotension. When patients have alpha antagonists on board, treatment with a beta agonist may have some unexpected effects. Since we know that there are beta receptors on the blood vessels, which can lead to a decrease in diastolic pressure, unopposed stimulation of the beta receptors may actually lead to hypotension when patients are already treated with an alpha antagonist. Next, let's review beta antagonists, or beta blockers. We learned that there are non-selective beta blockers, which block both the beta-1 and the beta-2 receptors, and propranolol is the classic example of that. Side effects of propranolol are notable for bronchospasm because of its beta-2 activity on the lungs. And like all beta blockers, there is some risk of a CHF exacerbation in patients who are already in acute heart failure. Most of our use of beta blockers nowadays is limited to beta-1 selective beta blockers like metoprolol, atenolol, and the short-acting esmolol, with side effects including obviously bradycardia and even leading to things like AV heart block and again CHF exacerbation. We know that beta blockers can cause hypotension, and this can be for a variety of reasons, for example, decreased myocardi myocardial contractility, a decreased heart rate, and a decrease in renin release. Nevertheless, beta blockers are a commonly used drug in patients who have heart failure, probably, and, and patients who have coronary artery disease as well, partially because they reduce myocardial oxygen demand. We also discussed mixed alpha-beta antagonists, and labetalol is the most commonly used in the operating room which blocks both alpha and beta receptors in a ratio of about 1 to 7 in the IV formulation. So as a result, we don't see any reflex tachycardia when we drop the blood pressure, but we don't see as much bradycardia as we would see with a pure beta antagonist like metoprolol. The alpha activity of labetalol leads to decreased peripheral vascular resistance and also a decrease in renin release, and so we really do get very nice control of hypertension and tachycardia with labetalol. There's also carvedilol, known as Coreg, which is an orally administered agent. And like labetalol, it's a non-selective beta antagonist and an alpha-1 antagonist. So you may have patients who come in on this drug, and you can understand that it works very similarly to labetalol. Clonidine is one of the few agonist drugs that can be used to drop blood pressure. Clonidine is a centrally acting alpha-2 agonist. It probably works through a variety of mechanisms, but most important for us to remember 
is that clonidine binds to the presynaptic alpha-2 receptors. These are what we think of as our negative feedback receptors. And by doing that, they decrease sympathetic output in the CNS and decrease the release of norepinephrine. Patients who abruptly stop their clonidine are at risk for rebound hypertension. And this can be a very severe hypertension, which can be very difficult to manage. Usually we recommend that patients who are undergoing, who are, who are experiencing clonidine withdrawal are treated with a vasodilator. Clonidine does have many other uses, as we described um, in analgesic treatments. It can be mixed with epidural or peripheral nerve block formulations. It's been used as a pre-anesthetic me medication. It's been used in treatment of opioid withdrawal or even in post-operative shivering. A few other antihypertensive drugs that would be worth familiarizing yourself with. The first is methyl dopa. Its brand name is Aldemet. And this drug you might run into in a pregnant patient or a patient who was recently pregnant because while it's used for treatment of hypertension, it's especially common in pregnancy-induced hypertension. Methyl dopa inhibits the enzyme dopa decarboxylase. And as we discussed last semester, there is a chain of synthesis starting with dopa to dopamine to norepi to epi. And right here where the star is, is where the enzyme dopa decarboxylase acts. So by inhibiting this enzyme, we decrease the synthesis of catecholamines, and that in turn lowers blood pressure. Methyl dopa basically is metabolized into an alpha-2 agonist and has some similar action to clonidine. Another drug that's very common in our practice is hydralazine. Hydralazine is a direct vascular smooth muscle relaxer. It works on arterioles more than veins, and through mechanisms that are not fully understood, it's a direct vasodilator. It has its effect especially in the coronary, cerebral, renal, and splanchnic circulation, and it has particularly strong effect on the diastolic blood pressure, although it will certainly decrease systolic blood pressure as well. Now, since it's a pure vasodilator, we expect the patients will have some reflex tachycardia from hydralazine. So while labetalol will decrease blood pressure and heart rate, hydralazine will decrease the blood pressure, but the heart rate will increase reflexively. There may be some direct in impact on heart rate as well. And the dose of hydralazine is usually between 2.5 and, and 10 milligrams IV. Sometimes it's hard to know how much hydralazine to give. And we have to be careful because the effect of hydralazine takes a good 10 to 20 minutes to work. And so you don't want to overdose the drug because it is long-acting, lasting 3 to 6 hours. But you also don't want to underdose it because you'll have to wait a good 10 or 20 minutes before you know if your dose has had an effect. I usually start with 5 or 10 milligrams in most of my patients. Hydralazine is metabolized in the liver and then excreted in the kidneys. Minoxidil is a term you may have heard associated with Rogaine, the hair loss medication. Minoxidil is an oral medication that acts a lot like hydralazine. It causes vasodilation and reflex tachycardia, and is usually reserved for some of the most severe forms of hypertension. It does have some side effects like fluid retention, edema, and pericardial effusion, and most interestingly, hypertrichosis, which is hair growth. And that was how they discovered that Rogaine was a good medication for baldness. So we've done a quick review of some of the sympathetic drugs from last semester that can be used to lower blood pressure. We added hydralazine to our discussion and a few other uncommon drugs that you may run across. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll pick up with the next video.